So, after seven years of being here, you think I could come up with a more sophisticated sermon than for today. But I'm going to try to get one of those big existential questions today. And you're probably thinking, oh, so what's the meaning of life and all that kind of thing? No, my existential question is, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Uh, so that's going to be our focus for the sermon today. Actually, it's going to be the introduction, not the focus. But when you think about that, how many of you are the, are the people that are on the side of the chicken? The chicken must have come first. I see some out there. Now, how many of you are on the side of the egg? That the egg must have come first. Okay, I see some of you out there. Um, so, we'll have our debate after the service. But I'm going to say that neither one of them came first. I'm going to say that God who made them came first. And that's the more important thing. But when you think about the chicken and the egg, God's intent was to give them to us, whichever one came first, to begin a cycle of life. That as the egg hatches and forms a chicken, or as the chicken lays an egg, that that cycle keeps on happening as long as eggs keep on hatching and chickens keep on laying eggs. And life keeps moving forward. But something would, would not work well if all of a sudden chickens stopped laying eggs, or eggs stopped hatching that whole cycle of life would come to an end. And when that happens, if you're someone who likes to eat chicken or eggs, you would say, well, we have a problem. There's no more chicken, there's no more eggs. And so where do you go? You go to what came first, and that is to God. And say, we need some more chicken and some more eggs. So that's the background of what I'm going to talk about today. But we're not going to talk about chicken and eggs the rest of the sermon. We're going to talk about two other things that are meant to go together that when we have them, they're meant to keep on working together to make sure that life keeps on being perpetuated and blessed. And those two things are not chicken and eggs, they are love and spiritual gifts. And so, how do they fit together? Um, and which one came first? Because if you look at Paul's letter to the Ephesians, Paul writes about the being filled with the love of God in Ephesians 3, and then in Ephesians 4, he talks about being given spiritual gifts. So the love must come first. But then Paul in 1 Corinthians, in chapter 12, writes about spiritual gifts. And then in chapter 13, talks about love. So spiritual gifts must come first. So what do you think? Which one comes first? The love or the spiritual gifts? God came. God comes first, yes. <laughs> you answered my question. What comes first is God. What comes first is the Holy Spirit. The one who gives us love, and the one who gives us spiritual gifts. And once again, that cycle, like with the chicken and the egg, if one of them stops happening, then the whole, whole series comes to an end. So that if you end up having all kinds of personal experience of God's love, but you don't use spiritual gifts to bless other people with that love, then that love just sort of dies with you and it's worthless. Or, if you have spiritual gifts, and you use them without love, then the whole cycle dies because those spiritual gifts become worthless, because people don't experience God's love through them. And the way that they're supposed to happen is, when we're given love, we use God's spiritual gifts so that other people experience God's love through us. And when we're given spiritual gifts, we use them in love, so that people experience God's presence and God's love through those gifts. So, what happens if for some reason you find yourself without one or the other? Where do you go? You go to what comes first. You go to God. You go to the Holy Spirit and say, we need you to once again give us the ingredients that we need to make sure that your love and your life ends up being perpetuated here in the world. But for some of us, I think, the cycle was lost in previous generations so that if you were to ask some of us, have you ever really experienced the love of God? And have you ever really seen God's spiritual gifts working through you to bless other people? You might say that you, you might not say you're missing one of them. You might say, I've never experienced either one of them. I've never experienced God's love personally, and I've never seen God's spiritual gifts work through me. So where do I start in that situation when I don't have either the chicken or the egg? When I don't have either the gifts or the love? Where do you go back to the thing that came first, which is to God? to the Holy Spirit. So with that in mind, that's part of why I gave you these little bookmarker things. If you're reading a book right now, or you something where you can take some time to pray, I think oftentimes we make it way too difficult. 
Um, we make it so difficult thinking, well, how can I live the best Christian life possible? How can I, what programs, what Bible studies do I need to do? How can I stir up all kinds of love in myself? And how can I be really effective at blessing other people? And we try to get that whole cycle of life to happen through our own efforts without really experiencing God's love and without really having God work through us, just we're working really hard based on our own efforts. And where do we go if that's the case? We go back to what came first, and that is to God, to the Holy Spirit. So because February, it seems like people talk about love during February for some reason. Um, maybe it has something to do with that holiday in the middle of the month um, where people spend lots of money. Um, but basically, <laughs> Uh, maybe that's why I've always been recalled by it, because I'm cheap. <laughs> um, but basically, what I want to do is, because we're reminded about love during this, the season of February, or the season of February, the month of February, um, that we focus a lot on feeling love in February, and we focus a lot on giving gifts so that other people can experience our love during February. Um, I want us to be thinking spiritually about that each day when you see those Valentine's advertisements to use that as a reminder to pray because maybe it's like you have one of those little spiritual Valentine's that says do you love me God and you don't really know if God does love you and this is the month to say God I need you to fill me with your love because I'm not sure how you would answer that question or maybe you're one of those people that well do you love someone else? Well, I think I love someone else, but I really don't know how to express that love. And God's the one who gives us the gifts that help us to express that love to bless other people. So I'm just inviting you during this month to not focus on what programs do you need to do, what Bible studies do you need to do, how hard you need to work to be a good Christian, but to just say, Lord, I need to go back to where this all began. I need to go back to the maker of love the giver of spiritual gifts. Because I, want, I don't want that cycle of life to be lost in my life. I don't want it to be lost in the way that I touch other people. I don't want to try to um, just feel God's love for myself without blessing someone else. And I don't want to try to serve someone else without doing it out of love. I need both. So to pray each day, you don't need to use these words, but the words I put on here is, Loving Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit so that I may know your love for me, so I may receive spiritual gifts, so others may know your love for them through me. Um, so, however you want to pray for that this month, go back to the source. Father, fill me with your Spirit, so that I may know you love me. And Father, give me your gifts, so that other people may know that you love them through me. Does that sound like a fair a homework assignment to do this month? Um, so that's my invitation. Because the solution to the chicken and egg problem and the love and gifts problem starts with the thing that came first, and that is God, the Holy Spirit. So, Amen. <laughs>